Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I will show you the five features that I love the most about Lightroom 5. Bonjour, and welcome to episode 57 of my photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop tips. My name is Sir Germany. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, France. And I'm very happy because I am back in Paris after traveling through the US. I was in Los Angeles and I was in Florida. Last week, I showed you my best tips on printing. A lot of people are having trouble on printing. They are too dark or a bit blurry or the colors are not right. Check out if you have this kind of trouble. This week, I will show you my five best feature in Lightroom 5. Using a photo I took in Florida for a beautiful house. This is the before and this is the after. And I will do the full retouching, but I will show you exactly the five tools that I'm using now on almost every photo which Lightroom 5 brought to the world. So, let me show it to you now. Okay guys, so here is my five favorite features in Lightroom 5. So number one, when you import a photo, you have this new option called the Build Smart Preview. For example, this photo uh, I'm adding, but I'm adding it on an external drive. It's already on the external drive, so I don't have a path there where I'm going to put it because it's already where I want it to be. But it's not, uh, it's not on my iMac, it's on a very small external drive. So with Build Smart Preview on, I will be able to retouch it even so my um, drive is not connected. Let me show it to you. So let me first import the photo. So the photo is getting imported in my Lightroom catalog. I'm going to go full screen. And now if I go to my finder and, uh, and go to my external drive here and I'm going to eject it, I can still do my tutorial and I can still, uh, I can still work on it even so it's not, uh, it's not uh, connected to my hard drive anymore. So that's, that's something really funny because if you look on the, the hard drive, um, it's, it's not even there. And you see Surge external, that's this little hard drive. It's not connected, it's not green, but I can still work on it. So that's the first option that I love. So let me do some little retouching on this photo real fast. I'm gonna open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. This you know, this you know very well. And then I'm going to do the uh, option key, bring up the whites until I see some points. You see, ooh, there's a lot of white there. I'm going to back it down and then I'm going to do the blacks to the left. Okay, so now I've got a basic retouching. I'm going to add, so that's my formula, highlights to minus 100, shadows plus 100. Now, this always worked uh, on a bit underexposed photo. Let me show you the before. That's the before. You see, it's... It's a very tricky situation because look at the before photo. The sky is very bright and the house is very dark. This is a very nice house in Florida. So how do you expose this? Well, I always go for the highlights, meaning that I was, I seen I went like minus one um, on my exposure because that's what it took to get the sky pretty much right. I mean, it's barely here. It's almost, you know, it's almost burned and the house is still dark, but I know that if I have a raw file, I can get the best out of it. So anyway, um, let's go back to where we were on the retouching. And uh, so add a bit of clarity, add a bit of vibrance. Yeah, something like that. I may be gonna do a little, uh, now I'm retouching this photo and my hard drive is not connected, guys. That's pretty awesome, right? Then I'm going for this um, graded filter. I'm gonna do a little filter on the sky here. Uh, just a, a little bit of minus exposure, maybe a bit of uh, contrast just for the sky, a bit of saturation just for the sky. I like the the blue sky, you know, and um, and yeah, maybe no noise. I'm not going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do for the sky. Uh, and one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower again the exposure just a tiny bit because I really want the sky to be really nice. And a white balance, I'm going to go for shade, see what shade is going to look like. Yeah, a bit warmer, it's kind of nice. I want this to be a bit warmer. Okay, now this is, uh, okay, use saturation and luminance. One thing that I do when you have the, some yellows from the sky there, I go, to, uh, I go to my use first, and I see if I can get my yellows a bit more orange. Yeah, it's kind of nicer there. And maybe uh, get my reds from magenta to pure red, something like that. And uh, yellow a bit more like this, yeah. Check out the difference. You know, it's it's subtle. It's especially here with the use. It just makes a little warmer, a little warmer sunset. You know. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now, 
we come to the second best thing I love about Lightroom 5, and that's this new lens correction. Now, see how this house is a bit distorted? I mean, you know, this is, let's say I, I really was shooting this house for the owner. You know, he wants to have his house straight. He wants to have the house, uh, you know, like we see human beings see it. Now, check this out. If I click on auto, boom, amazing. I'll show you again. Before, after. Now, before we could do that, and we had to go, let me put it off, we had to go to manual and we had to find first to do rotation to make sure the photo was straight and then go vertical to put it right and then, you know, do all kind of things. Now this is finito. I don't even use that anymore. I just don't. I just go to basics, auto, bam. And I got my uh, distortion corrected. I think that's an amazing, amazing technology. I don't know how they do that, but they do it. So that's the second best option in Lightroom 5 is the lens correction with the upright function. I mean, you can try to go for level. Level is just going to make the photo, you know, rotate for the horizontal line. Uh, vertical is going to make uh, make it straight. But in most of the time, auto does the trick. And here it does perfectly the trick. Okay. So my third option that I love about um, about Lightroom 5 is this new filter, uh, the Rydral filter. Now, the reason of that filter was invented by the woman in Adobe for uh, a reason of uh, go going, you know, tailor-made vignetting. What do I mean by tailor-made vignetting? Well, let me show you. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, which is important, is to enable the profile correction. Check this out. Look how much vignetting was on this photo. Uh, after because this was shot with what with this oh that's a new lens that i bought by the way which is an amazing lens 10 20 it's pretty cheap lens i bought it on bnh for three four hundred dollars it's a 10 20 millimeter for the 7d because the problem that i have is that i do a lot of interior design shot and i was shooting 5d mark ii with the 1740 now the thing is i left that in paris because my wife was shooting with it and i was traveling in but i had no more big, big wide angle and if I buy, if I put the 1740 on the 70, it works, but it becomes a 24, uh, 2460 because of the 1.5 thing. And 24 is not wide enough for most of the shoot that I like to do. I love landscapes and landscape, you need wide angle. So I bought this 1020s. The 1020s on, on the 70 is really a 15 to 30 lens, but 15, that's wide enough. I was very happy with that, you know. So that's a little parenthesis, but... Problem is, look at this, a lot of lens correction, you know, a lot of vignetting. Now, let me take the vignetting out of the picture and let me show you. So before, if you wanted to do a vignetting, all you could do was the post crop vignetting where basically you put back the vignetting and I love that. I believe me, I really love it. And what that does, it does, it just darkens, you know, the corner of the photo. Now, Adobe invented a new way, which is the right wall filter. Let's say that I want, I wanted, let me make this whole photo a bit brighter. So you, you get the point. Um, Oops, sorry, I'm not on the right tool. I'm gonna make the whole photo brighter. And let's say I really want to, to focus the attention on the house, on the house. Well, uh, if I do a vignetting, it's not gonna work because it's gonna put a vignetting everywhere, you know, and the house is here on the left. So now they have this new thing, the gradual filter, where, where I can make like a filter above the house, okay, and just lower the exposure. And it's gonna make like a tailor-made vignetting effect. Basically, let me make it a bit bigger. The whole idea is that it's going to be normal here and it's going to be dark. You know, the vignetting effect is going to be everywhere except on a house, which is kind of cool, which is kind of cool. But the way I use it is, is reverse. So that's already one very cool function. The way I do it is I click on, uh, let me just erase that. I'm going to erase it. Let me go back on the photo and lower the exposure again. And then let me go back to this radio filter. And this is how I do it. I use it to uh, complex the light. Okay, I'm gonna put a circle here on the house and I'm gonna boost the exposure. Now, the thing what, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna boost the exposure everywhere except on the house. Now, if I click on invert mask, look what it does. Let me just increase a bit the exposure so you really get to see what I mean. I now have like a sort of a spotlight. It's like if I have a torch and I'm illuminating the, this, this photo. And I love that because you see, I'm going to put one here. And once I've got a, a circle that I love, well, I can just press Command and Alt, which is probably Control and Alt uh, on, um, on Windows. And I can just drag and drop, and it's going to copy the circle. I have one there, and I can make this one even, even stronger if I want. 
I can click on this one and make this one even less stronger if I want. And then I can take this one and duplicate it here. And what it does, it makes, you know, I just put, add a bit of light here on the grass here. Maybe here on the grass, maybe even more there. Why? It just makes the photo looks better because it's complexing the light. Now, you make sure you don't abuse it. You know, I could, for example, here on the, on the, um, on the whole sunset, I could do reverse because you, you know the rule. If you uh, back down the exposure, what happens is you make the, uh, you know, when you take a color and you make it darker, it becomes more saturated. So maybe why not add a bit of magenta and add a bit of yellow just in that part and make that sunset pop even more, you know, in that circle. And you have to, you can make sure that the feathering is really strong so that, you know, no one can see that you've done that and you've cheated, you know. So now I can take that circle again and put it in the woods, you know, the circle in the woods. All right. And why not here on that tree a little bit, you know, that, oh, it's a bit strong. Well, let's make this one a bit smaller. And in no time, you're relighting your entire photo. In no time, you are making this whole photo a lot more interesting. Let me light up here, the rod, for example. Okay. Ooh, nice, you know. And so that's really, that is really my third best option is the gradual filter. I love that option. Okay. Let me show you before, after. See how now the sunset is better and see how like the, all the, the structure, I mean the, the texture everywhere is kind of like nicer. Love that. Okay. So that's one good thing. And I tell you, we are retouching this photo and my hard disk is not connected. It's crazy. I know it is crazy. Okay. Uh, last but not least, and I really love that is this uh, new brush tool. Uh, let's say that, um, I wanted to, let me zoom in on this a little bit. I wanted to take this crack out, for example, before I couldn't do that because all I could do was a circle. I could click, you know, and it would clean up that circle. Now I can make this a bit lower and now I can paint with the spot removal tool. I can paint ladies and gentlemen. It's crazy. I can paint and I took this crack out. That is really amazing. That's something you couldn't do before. Okay. So uh, it's, that's really the fourth thing that I love about this. So I can really, now I used to go to Photoshop to do all that. And now I can do that here. And if I wanted, I could take all these cracks out, you know, and make a road a lot more cleaner. Uh, to be honest, I don't really care because I don't think the cracks are that ugly, but you get the point, you know, like, let's say I wanted to take this out of the grass, you know, I could, and uh, just have to make sure it's, uh, yeah, kind of cool, right? Kind of really cool. That's something totally new. So that's my fourth really um, preferred function in uh, Lightroom 5. Now, the last one that I loved, I'm not sure this is gonna fly on this photo. It's when, it's again on the, on the spot removal tool. Now you have to understand that in the job that I do, I do huge prints. We're talking like, you know, prints that cost like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars, two thousand dollars of a print. Now it happened to me a couple of times where I print a photo for about three, four hundred dollars and I discover in the left corner a spot that I miss. And believe me, on huge print spots become bigs. And you're like, shit, and that's the only thing you can see. There's nothing else you can see. Now I'm not sure this photo has spots. Uh, let's check it. But there is this new option. When you are on the spot removal tool, you have this new option called visualize spot. If you click on it, it you can see spots that you wouldn't see normally. Like for example, here, what is that? You know, this, ooh, this is strange. So you can unclick it and see for yourself. It's, for, I mean, it's, it's a star, but if it is a spot, I could just, you know, use that spot healing and boom, take it out, you know? So watch for in the corners, see if there is any spots, you know? And that's really like here, for example, ooh, this looks like a spot. It might be a star, let's check it out. Uh, no, it's a little cloud. Oh, you know what? It might be a spot. It might be just a little spot, a very tiny one. But anyway, you get the concept. This visualized spot is going to get you the ability to see the spots you couldn't see before. So no more surprises, no more shit. You know, I want to, uh, I did this big print and I've got this right big spot here in the corner, you know, finito. I love that. So that's my five favorite options in Lightroom 5. It's amazing. Now to finish off this photo, I think I'm going to lower even more the exposure. Uh, maybe add a bit of, yeah, no, no, not really. Why not? It's a bit too much, a bit too much magenta. Yeah, I'm crazy about magenta. Now, one thing I, I do is I'm going to go into the brush tool because that's something you cannot do with the bridal circle. 
is to, um, I want to brush, I want to get the eyes to go to the sunset. So you know what, I'm going to brush a little way of light, very subtle way of light here in the, in, in the way, so just to guide a bit the eyes. Um, yeah, something like that, maybe warming up. So it's, it's kind of warmer, but it, it just gets the eyes of viewer inside of the photo, right? That's what we want. We want the eyes of the viewer to go inside of the photo. That's why it's good to have like lines, leading lines that goes in the photo. It gets people in the photo. Now I'm going to um, put on pause and turn back on my uh, hard drive just for a second. Okay, so I turn back on my hard drive. So now I can really finish, finish off that photo. I can zoom in more than in the preview mode. And I see that the photo is a bit grainy. That's why I'm doing it because before I want to finish it off, you see, that's the problem of taking underexposed photo. You see, it's very grainy. So last but not least, let me take some grains of that photo. Um, so I'm like zoomed in at 100%. I'm gonna go to details and I'm gonna move the noise slider around 25. I think 25 should do the trick. Oh, look, it did the trick there. Maybe move this around 50. Now that, and now I'm gonna get the sharpening. Now I have a formula and my formula is you take 100 and you minus the noise reduction you did. So 100 minus 25 gives me 75. Well, 75 is a sharpening I'm gonna do. That's, that's just invented totally by me. Now it's kind of cool, but look how it's bringing back again noise in the, uh, the sky. I don't like that because you can really see that on the print. So the trick is the masking tool. You hold on the option key or the alt key and you mask and the, you know, anything which is white is going to get sharpened and anything which is black is not going to get sharpened and we don't want the sky to be sharpened. So I'm usually going around 50 until I've got a pretty black sky. And now the sky is not grainy anymore and we have a clean photo. So let me show you the before. That's where we came from and that's where we are. You know, just using these new features in Lightroom 5. Okay, now why am I talking about that? I'm talking about that because I've got a new brain training on Lightroom 5 that just came out. Let me show it to you. Now I'm on a website called photosearch.com. If you go to tutorials and individual training, you see that I have four new courses that came out. One is called the Lightroom 5 training. No, let me start at the beginning. Lightroom 5 training, import, organize, and export your photos, $17. Then this is about one hour, one hour and 20 minutes long. But the thing is that it's a lot of small videos on every function about importing, organizing, exporting your photos. Then you've got the Lightroom 5 retouching your photos and that's the longest course. That is over 24 uh, videos, three hours long, seven full projects from A to Z with all the raw files plus uh, a video for each retouching tool in Lightroom 5. So that's my biggest to date. And then you've got a whole one hour and something video on maps, books, and print. We're going to do a whole book on Paris and I'll show you all the tricks about printing. And then you've got a last module about slideshows and web galleries. So in all, you've got over six hours of training. And if you take each module, you will pay $99. Now, uh, for those who want the whole package, you can buy it in one shot here. Instead of paying $99, you will pay it for $77. Okay, and because I'm launching this new training, I have a special offer. If you put in the coupon called LR5 training, which you can see here, LR5 training, well, you get an additional 15%, which is around $65. So for $65, you get all of these modules and all of the videos and all of the raw files, which is a pretty good deal. It's the most extensive training I've done. A lot of people ask me, well, what's the difference between your YouTube videos? Well, it's a lot more in depth. You know, I made a video for each function in Lightroom almost. And I mean, it's my way of using it. You get all the raw files, you get a lot more projects. And last but not least, you help me do all these free videos because if you buy this training, it gives me the finances to make all the free stuff for you guys. The raw files, the preset that I do every week, this is financed by this one and only course. So if you wanna back me up, please purchase this course. You can get it for $66 and it will be of a great help. I thank you very much and let's get back to the studio. Thank you very much for checking out on this tutorial. I love Lightroom 5 and I think these new features are worth the upgrade. Thank you also if you get a chance to check on my new Lightroom 5 course. It was um, a lot of work, but I really like it a lot. I'll see you next week for more free stuff. Goodbye.